For those of you who are taking thesis seminar, I wanted to spend a few minutes today talking about a research matrix and how you can use Mendeley to better organize your ideas around uh, the articles, the primary research articles that you're using for your literature review. Remember, we want to try to focus mainly on primary research articles. This is going to be our best source of information. We want to limit websites. In fact, no websites and no more than two books. But again, if you have all primary research articles in your references, uh, even better. Also, we'll look at some examples of primary research articles versus uh, just theoretical articles. So we can make a distinction between those two. And uh, we'll look at that within Mendeley. But first, let's look at research matrix and look at the template that I've created in Microsoft Teams. So you can find this document under files and go under the general tab you should see a folder called research matrices now if you go into this folder choose any of these files and simply rename it with your full name we'll go into the template itself and see what how we can use this and adapt it to our own for our own purposes so once you have a title for your paper, I would add it here along the top. Notice we have references um, going to the right. So in each column, we have uh, references. And then in the A column, we have ideas in the form of topic sentences. So in this example, we have three subtopics. We have three main sections a, for a literature review uh, of 2,250 words more or less, anywhere from two to four main sections or subsections will be appropriate. For our example, we'll include three. Also, for uh, the purposes of this example, I've included four topic sentences to represent four body paragraphs. Again, this is an example. You might have uh, three, you might have more topic sentences depending on how many body paragraphs you're gonna need to complete each section. Notice here we have evidence as well. We have evidence as cells that reference a particular topic sentence as well as uh, the, the reference itself. So here, these are gonna be citations. Remember, evidence is gonna uh, be in the form of citations when we're develop developing our literature review. So in this case, the idea here is to bring in and paraphrase or bring in a direct quote any ideas that you feel will support a topic sentence. And so here you'll see that this is a, a easy way to organize your citations, to find a home, so to speak, for your citations, for the ideas that you're finding in your articles. Okay, so again, here the idea is to bring in either copy and paste the direct quote or paraphrase, because you can decide later uh, to paraphrase a direct quote that you've included in this matrix. Most of your citations, if not all of your citations, should be paraphrased. Almost all of your citations in your literature review should be paraphrased. We should not have more than 15% of your text as a direct quote. 15, that's 1-5. So no more than 15% of your citations in your literature review should not be uh, should be direct quotes. And we'll do the math here just to give you a word count. If you have 2,250 words in your literature review times 0.15, try that again, 2,250 words times 0.15, that's going to be around 337 or so words uh, as a direct quote. But that's just a guide. Your, your best bet most of the time is to paraphrase. It helps in the transitions. It's actually easier to transition from one idea to the next, from sentence to sentence. And uh, it's usually more, it, it allows you more flexibility in presenting that idea in your own words, okay? So when you're paraphrasing, paraphrase the whole idea. Don't, don't paraphrase some and then have some direct quote within the same, uh, within the same citation. Right, completely reword it, use different words, but again, express the same idea. We'll still need a citation. Paraphrasing, 
is usually better than direct quotes. Direct quotes would only be in those cases, those few cases where you really want to capture a, a very specific idea, uh, something that was expressed uh, very, uh, you know, uh, in a unique way. And in most cases, again, almost in all cases, it's best to paraphrase. So that's a good rule of thumb, I think, to follow whenever you're developing your own body paragraphs and you're including evidence within those body paragraphs is <clears throat> to paraphrase. So again, this matrix is a tool, right? So again, if, if you bring in direct quotes and then later paraphrase, that's fine. The main point here is to bring in your ideas into their appropriate cells. All right, so it'll be under the reference. Now the reference one, reference two, reference three, and so on, this is where you're going to include, well, the, uh, the, the actual source of your information. Now, I have the word reference here, and perhaps what I should have labeled this as citation, what I would include is simply the author's last name and the year. All right, so what I would include up here in row three, under each of these references, or the author's last name, or et al. if it's more than one author, and the year. In the, in the citation, in the references here, in the evidence cells, I would include the idea, so if it's a copy and paste direct quote, or if it's a paraphrase, I would include the page number where you can find that source, you can find that information. So you can easily find the article, right, from the Citation up here, and then the page number where you exactly where you found uh, the piece of evidence. All right, so this is what I would recommend completing. This is a way that you can organize your your evidence, and you can see if, for example, you need more pieces of evidence for a particular body paragraph. Remember, these topic sentences are going to be representative of a body paragraph. Now, what I would do is take this one step further, and I would write out, instead of subsection number one, I would actually write out the heading of the section. So whatever heading you've used in your Word document, bring that over to your research matrix and label these and, and replace the text. Instead of subsection number three, you would actually have the subheading that you're going to use for your literature review. Similarly, I would also replace the topic sentence, number one, with the actual topic sentence, the complete sentence, the first sentence of each of your body paragraphs I would include in column A. Now what I would do just to make this manageable, I would probably, you could widen it slightly, maybe select the A column and select this button, wrap, to make sure that when you're writing a longer sentence, it just wraps it so that these columns don't get pushed too far over to the right. That's up to you. Um, but the point here is that we complete this matrix, and this is a tool that you can use to, um, to organize your evidence and your pieces of evidence and also be able to find maybe areas where you need more evidence. Maybe you need to find work on subsection 3. I don't know, the uh, third uh, body paragraph. You need maybe a few more pieces of evidence. So this is what I would suggest that, that you use. I think this is a, a good way to, um, to help organize your ideas. And if you complement the matrix with, let's say, a tool like Mendeley, there are others out there. But if you look at uh, using Mendeley, you can uh, bring in all of your PDF documents. And what's really nice about Mendeley is that it, it allows you to leave notes. And you can highlight text and uh, you can leave notes. So for example, let's see. Um, so if you want to leave a note, you could leave a note about a particular piece of uh, information that you used, um, treatment, whatever. You can leave a note here. And those notes then will start to appear under notes along the right-hand side of your screen. So this is an easy way to uh, find the problem, like when you find the problem that the researchers are investigating, you can select that and label it as a note. So you can easily jump to that, that information. 
and it's just an easy way to select ideas. So you would here in this case, you could copy a piece of text and bring it over to uh, to your um, to your matrix. Okay, so uh, again, you could use these two, the matrix and Mendeley, to um, to really organize and and get your head around uh, all of the information here that you're finding in the primary research articles. Remember, primary research articles are going to be those that have a method section. These are articles that contain studies where they went out, just like you're doing this semester, to collect data, to analyze the data, to report those findings. So oftentimes they'll use different terminology. In this case, they label it research design. Sometimes it's called method. I'll refer to it as method. Sometimes it's called methodology. But in all cases, it's just a section that includes some description of participants, some description of how they collected the data, maybe how they analyzed the data, and, and what kind of instruments they use to collect the data. Like they will describe the, um, any questionnaires that they used. They will describe any observation forms or, or methods that they used, any rubrics that were used. And then also there'll be a section called results or res results in discussion. This will be where they are presenting their findings. Here's another example. This is another article. And here again, we have, they call it methodology. They have a section of participants. They have the research questions, right? And this would be something that you could highlight. You could say, okay, um, this is important. Maybe these are the same or similar research questions that I could incorporate into my own study. So I think I'll select that, even though I'm having some issues right now. Selecting a little bit too much, but anyway, I can go ahead and select that. I can right click and add a note. I can label this research questions. When I do that, I can go under notes here. I can always jump to this if I need to. Right, if I were at the beginning here at the top of the article, and I said, oh, I want to check out the research questions, and I can click in the yellow section here, and it'll take me right to the research questions. So this is what I mean by finding primary research articles that are very similar to what you want to study. Similar in the sense of the methodology includes practices, instruments, ways of analyzing data that you could incorporate or that you could modify or replicate in your own study. Maybe these research questions are very similar to the research questions that you could present or include in your own study. Maybe you need to slightly modify them, etc. But the point here is to try to find at least one article that's very similar with respect to the methods section uh, of what you want to do. Do you have participants that, that allow you to do this study, to replicate this study? Do, are they available, right? Um, are you able to record your observations? Are you able to access their classes? Are you able to uh, witness what they do in their class, whether synch synchronously or asynchronously, in order to collect the data necessary to answer your research questions? Remember, the literature review should set out to answer the research questions. It's how other people, right, other researchers have answer the research questions. Your job as the researcher later is to collect data and analyze your data and then present your findings as your attempt in answering your research questions. The research questions really serve as the bridge between the theory and your own research. So always rem re uh, remember to uh, keep focusing on your research questions and modify them so that the literature, the theory, addresses the same questions. It actually answers the questions. And of course, later when you start to collect your data, your instruments that you use, you're going to set out to do the same thing. So you can compare your answers to your study to the answers of how others have answered similar questions. Okay. So Mendeley and this research matrix. This is what I would recommend. These are some good tools to help you organize your uh, articles, your thoughts around different 
ideas that you're going to include as evidence in your own literature review. If you guys have any questions about these technologies or how to use these, uh, let me know. If you're having problems finding articles, this is something we need to discuss right away. If you have any serious concerns about where the direction, where you're going with your research, or you're not sure what the next step is, uh, don't wait until your next uh, tutoring session. Reach out to me. Leave a comment either in Microsoft Teams. You can leave a comment in my, your Microsoft Word documents. And or you can leave a comment in Notion if there is something uh, in there that you want to reference and comment on or question um, in Notion itself. There's a lot of content I'm including in Notion, so sometimes it's easier to leave a comment there if you want to ask about a specific uh, piece of content from that website. All right, so um, let, keep me posted, guys, with your research, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.